I'm interested in the relationship between Californian photography and early environmentalist ideas around 1900. So for a very long time, Californian photographers have existed in the public imagination as lone male explorers venturing out into the quote unquote wilderness and producing these beautiful prints of monumental landscapes. If you think of people like Carlton Watkins or Ansel Adams, and for a very long time, these beautiful photographs have been read as somewhat automatically environmentalist. And in my project, I'd like to complicate this understanding of Californian photographers as nature lovers by looking at collective photography, by looking at camera clubs and how the camera club practices were entangled with destructive landscape transformation, with mineral extraction, and with the attempted erasure of indigenous voices. And I'm thinking here about the ecological footprint of collective photography. So while camera clubs produced these wishful environmental pictures at the same time they relied on the railroad which really ravaged the landscapes across the american west they relied on the raw materials of photography particularly silver which was also mined in these territories and they created a dominant european american understanding which was primarily aesthetic of these landscapes through their group practices, through excursions, and through exhibitions. And I feel like this long history of California's photography climate, if you will, is still relevant today. There are millions of people who visit the state every year who pour into places like Yosemite, myself included, and they're equipped with smartphone cameras and film cameras. And in Southern California, where we are right now, one can really sense the effects of climate change and of environmental injustice. And all the while we're inhabiting this very beautiful space. So I feel like this is the appropriate location to think about the political ecologies of photography. It's an immense privilege to live in the former home of the Mann family and I'm extremely grateful and very humbled by this experience and I feel like the house reminds us of how fragile artistic creation can be in a certain political climate but at the same time I feel like the house also embodies the possibility of reinvention of re creation, if you will. If you think of the, the Munn family, they, they rebuilt their lives here in Los Angeles as the city was just emerging and they were reinventing their lives basically at, at the edge of the world, um, which is how we sometimes think of Los Angeles. And today the house is somewhat removed from the hustle and bustle of the big city, but in this open and uncluttered space of light and of glass, we really get the sense of creative freedom and to be able to share that creative freedom with a community feels very special. And on another note, since I'm sleeping in Thomas Mann's room just upstairs, I was actually thinking about a quote from the book Death in Venice, where at some point he writes, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing, that in every artistic nature, there is a tendency to accept injustice when it creates beauty. So in other words, what is beautiful may at the same time also overshadow or even create injustices, inequalities and damages. And to me, that is a very relevant way of thinking about the, photo the photographers and the photographic prints that I'm working with. the people and the place. It's been so wonderful to live and to work and to write alongside so many inspiring people, not just academics, but also journalists, poets, artists, 
locals from all different backgrounds and to share this space together for this very brief moment in time. And I've been traveling a lot across California for the past 10 years, but the encounters I've made at the house this time around really changed my entire experience. Um, in the past, I used to rush from one archive to the next, from one collection to the next, and this time around, I felt like I really had time and also time to engage with the city, with its art scene, and to get the, the vibrations of a city like Los Angeles. And at the same time, you know, the place itself, it's yes, it's a city of concrete, it's a city of cars, it's a city of freeways, but the natural world is also making its way into everything. So right behind the house, there's this little canyon road and just a couple of minutes away from the house, you get the, the crashing waves of the Pacific Ocean. And to understand also that it really does make a difference to live in a place where the sun is shining almost all the time, as banal as that may sound, it, it's been a very unique experience, yes. Thank you.